it all started. From, from there it was a success in England and uh, started the thing in America. We'd been together three, four years and uh, we, I think we played, uh, we, we came back from the States and played uh, a couple of gigs and uh, my last concert was, uh, was at the Crystal Palace actually and then I went on to, uh, to put my own band together. Yeah, it was a mutual thing, you know. Uh, I wanted to do something else, they wanted to do something else. Uh, Rick appeared in the picture and uh, I had been working with the original co-writer with John, a guy called David Foster who co-wrote some of the earlier uh, tunes and we'd been playing together and writing stuff and you know, working with other musicians and uh, we kind of got this little nucleus of a band together. So it went from there. I was with a band called Straws, which are, I won't go into the whole history, but it was basically a folk band that had started, I'd tried to turn into electric folk and things. And succeeded to a certain extent. On the last straw store I did, we were supporting Yes. After we'd done our, you know, the first half, I came into the audience and I watched the Yes set and was genuinely very impressed because uh, they broke all the rules. I loved it. I handed in my notice with straw and I'd already done that. Uh, this is in July of 71. I'd come back from a session, a late night session that had finished about two in the morning. And I had an early morning session, and so I had to leave the house at about seven, so I was only going to get a few hours sleep. Gone into bed, and the phone rang. I said, hello, it's Chris Squire here. I remember the conversation vividly. He said, no, it's Chris here. Chris Squire. And I said, oh, yeah. And I said, do you know what time it is? And he said, hold on a minute. And he came and said, yeah, it's quarter to three. I said, no, no, do you realise what time it is? I said, look, I've got a session at seven o'clock. And he said, oh, oh, look, do you wonder if you fancied... Uh, Joining the band? I said, no, no, no. No, I said, I'm finished with bands, go back into sessions. Good night, put the phone down. Then I got a message from Brian Lane, who was Yes's manager. Brian Lane said to me, look, why don't you go and at least just have a rehearsal? He said, at least give it a, give it a try and then see how you feel from there. I said, all right. So I went along at this rehearsal the following morning, and it was at that actual rehearsal that day that um, the basis of Heart of the Sunrise and Roundabout were put together. And, and it's a strange thing, nothing was really said because uh, it was suddenly sort of like seven o'clock in the evening and they said, well, that's the end of the rehearsal. And, uh, and Steve Howe couldn't drive. And I said, Steve, where, where do you live? And he said, uh, Hampstead. I said, well, um, you know, I'd drop you off. Um, and I said, look, I, I pass, literally, I live in Harrow, I pass by your door. I mean, should I pick you up in the morning for rehearsal? He said, yeah, okay, fine. And it was strange, and that's, so nothing really was ever said. I mean, that, that was it. I mean, the rehearsal, I mean, I'll never forget those rehearsals to my dying day. I remember Chris coming with the, with the opening line of, of Heart of the Sunrise, um, and Steve having the initial da dum dum do 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 and I had, uh, and then I threw in the piano bit, the din dum do do and then John had the, oh, this is wonderful. This is absolutely wonderful.
remember the time we said goodbye. Did we really tell lies? Letting in the sunshine. Did we really count to one hundred? So we were left alone. We were left to experiment. We were left to try things out, which was why there was such. Um, forward thinking things that went on as in close to the edge and, and, in, and in fragile. Nobody told us that you weren't allowed to do that in rock and roll. It was uh, assumed that that was our job, that we would somehow embroider things and we had evidently the technical ability to be able to do that. And we had musicians in the band who could write extensions to an idea, you know, who could develop things. For that you need a little musical training, which is not usually around in rock. There was a lot of free form attitude in the late 60s. Uh, but the early 70s to have uh, an incredible memory for, for musical notes, shape, form and so on was a great uh, boon for me. It, it made me feel like I was part of something really important. We as a band were very lucky because not only did we have some talent as a band and the people who were in it and the writing talent, we also had the support of people who were around us. A lot of the time I feel because of the fact they didn't understand what we were doing. You couldn't stick Rick Wakeman in just a rock and roll band or Steve Howe. They had more going for them. And Chris, especially, uh, his work with Bill, if you listen to Fragile and Close to the Edge, is immaculate. He uh, had very high frequencies coming out of the bass. He was always playing somewhere up here rather than somewhere down there. And the bass cut very cleanly. Uh, in the days of poor amplification, that meant that I, in order to get my snare drum to cut, had to get the higher frequencies out of my snare drum. So I tended to play rim shots, which made the thing go pong, you know, to try to cut through. We were after to try and get as much emotion into melodies, into, into making the full use of a melody by doing key changes, um, by doing um, rhythm changes by changing the notes around chordal structures underneath it, getting the most out of it, working very much on a classical principle. It certainly epitomises the time, obviously fragile is the time, and it's that time that our creativity got so high, we got very, we all had our own tracks on fragile, which, which allowed us, you know, to taste that freedom, to do uh, a track any way we wanted it. It reminds me of Scotland because we were up there when John and I started writing this. We knew even then John and I as a team we would listen to the other guys, what the arrangement, new ideas that they would bring in. And so it got to be quite an expansive piece. <laughs> <laughs> 